Hello, today's daily Bible study comes from Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and reads as follows. Do you know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if the husband dies, she is released from that from the law that binds her to him. So then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead in order that we might bear fruit for God, for when we were in the realm of the flesh and the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us so that we bore fruit for death. But now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Ooh. Paul is steadily, steadily talking and he says to the, Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, do you know, brothers and sisters, for I'm speaking to those who know the law. And Paul is asking them, do you, do you know the law? Because I'm about to tell you what you should know. And the law has a certain um, time frame to it or how it works is it has a certain dominion over things. Um, we've been changed with Jesus being here, okay? And Paul says, we've been talking about this, but now, since I told you that you are no longer under the law, but you are under grace, the law has dominion over a man. And he's going to tell them now exactly how we are no longer under the dominion of the law, how law does not have us. But he explains it in a way that they can understand it. So he says, or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives, first of all. It has dominion over a man. The law, which includes the law of Moses, has dominion over man. But if you look at it all out and the vastness of it, creation has a law over man, okay? And he tells you that, yeah, that code does, but the law of creation was here and creation was here before this law. So let me speak to you now. Um, he's saying this is bigger than what was given to Moses, the Mosaic law. Um, and it's inclusive, but there were laws created and communicated, spoken to us about through creation and by conscience. And they also have ruling over man. And then he says, the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. Paul is telling them now, when you die, all that law is gone. That law is gone. And he puts it in a perspective of, listen, if a wife is no longer bound to her husband because he died, she is no longer bound to him. In other words, if, if her husband dies, she is free of all the law that she has been committed to, to a married man, because death is the end of it. So... He starts to talk about him saying, and your death 
Mm. Where Jesus sets us free of the law. Because he says, therefore, in, in verse 4, my brethren, you also have become dead of the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, and we should bear fruit to God. First of all, it says, therefore, my brethren, because he's saying, hey, y'all, us, you have also become dead to the law through the body of Christ. When you accepted Christ, you became dead to the law that you may be married to another. And he's he's stating it to, in that comparison where the law was that man living. But the law now is dead through the body of Christ. And now you can marry another. And then the one that you're marrying, the one that you can commit to, the one that will have dominion over you, well, he is the one that was raised from the dead, Jesus Christ, that we should bear fruit to God. If you look back in chapter 6, um, Paul told us that we, we died with Jesus Christ. If you remember back in chapter 6, and we rose with him. Paul speaks to our death to sin. But he now is telling you, and you also died to the law. See, Paul is telling them plain and clear. That law, that man that you were married to, you are, he has died. So he's saying the law has died to you. It doesn't make you stand right in front of the Lord. You need a different marriage. And he told you that. A grace through faith. Believers have to realize that we are no longer under law. We are under a new covenant of grace and mercy. And you have to know these things in your heart. See, you, you know this through your heart, your belief in Christ, your faith in Christ. You have to have this. And you have to have Christ. You can no longer depend on the law. It, it, and you couldn't before. It doesn't save you. Sin was before law. Jesus atoned and cleaned up all sin. The law couldn't clean up sin. And it is not a way to salvation. Only Jesus is the way to salvation. You can't be right with God if you do not have Christ. And you can't be right with God if you have the law. If you are under the law. Don't get punished by something that ain't going to help you. The law can't help you. You have to be with Christ. Now, that you might be married to another, like I said, we are not, we are not free from the law where we can do things ourselves. We are free, when he said dead to the law, we are free to be with Jesus. And so that we can bear, and it tells you there, bear fruit to God. We bear fruit to God. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death. Now, I just told you in verse 4, you can bear fruit to God. Now, he's saying the problem with the law was when you were in that flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law, they were working us and our members, and they were bearing fruit to death. In other words, under the law, you didn't bear fruit to God. Instead, you bore fruit to death. Because, as it says there, the law aroused the passions of sins within us. To bear fruit to death, 
is a problem of the law. And, and we'll see that a little later, but it's a problem of the law. So now Paul is telling them, we only were able to bear fruit to God when we left the law. Because remember, the law was bearing fruit to death, and Jesus bears fruit to the Lord. Once you marry Jesus, you bear fruit to God. So Paul starts off and he says, first of all, the law had authority over only living things. And then we had to have a death with Jesus, a death with Jesus that would get the law off our back. So we left the law. We died from the law. Law died to us and we remarried and our marriage was to Jesus. And when we were in the law, we were bearing fruit to death. But when we married to Jesus, he set us free from law and we were able to bear fruit to God. And once we were able to bear fruit to God, now you can look at the problems that were occurring with the law because it tells you, you when you were in the flesh that you didn't bear fruit to God. What good is it then? You bore fruit to death. And that was because our sins were aroused, as it said, our passions. And bearing fruit to God is what we need. We are now free from the law. The law has no dominion over us because we remarried. Amen.